Well, uh, this morning we have a very special honor to be able to celebrate with the number of our folks in our church that are moving from one place and another in their educational pursuits or maybe moving uh, from an educational back educational environment into a job environment because they've graduated from college or maybe moving going on to more college and things of that nature. But we've got some graduates here that we want to recognize. And as I call your name, I'm going to ask you to come up front. Um, the ABW president, Gloria Bradley, is going to be here. And she has some gifts that she will present to those of you who are graduating. Just come up, receive your gift, and stay up here for a little bit. And we'll have a prayer with you before we before we let you go. First of all, let's talk about and uh, celebrate with those who are all graduated from junior high. But before I go any further with this, I understand that the um, uh, the ladies, high school ladies, won the sectional track meet. Is that correct? And they going to state? And I don't know when the boys sectional. Has it happened yet? Wednesday. Okay. So wish them all the best. And I don't know. I think the baseball teams, are they in regionals or... Anyway, yeah, well, wish them all the best. And the, the um, boys, uh, junior high, uh, I don't, do we have anyone here in the church that's on the girls' sectional winning team? I don't know. But I do know we have uh, some, uh, one member of the state, or the state-bound uh, boys junior high track team, and that is Grayson Dow. And Grayson, they're um, four by 200, won the sectional, and the team won the sectional, and they're on the way to state. So congratulations to all of you all, and wish you all, wish you all the best as you continue. Um, now, speaking of junior high, uh, we, uh, let's acknowledge those who are graduating from junior high, Grayson Dow. Don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Dow fan a little bit. Luke Farley. Yeah. Dexter Fulton. Dex. Yeah. Sophie Kidwell. Isabel Meinhart. And Drake Wolf. High school. Um, Emma Kidwell. And also graduated from high school, Morgan White. And these three that I'll read off now are finishing very different uh, college level education. First of all, um, well, I guess I want a minute to say Emma Kidwell, uh, of course, graduated from high school, and she, oh, Emma, where are you going to school? Okay, we're St. Louis University, very good. And Morgan, you're going to U of I? Yep, very good. So wish you all the best as you continue with your education. And then graduating from Eastern Illinois University with a bachelor's, Mariah Ernest. Also graduating from Eastern Illinois uh, with a master with a bachelor's, and she's gonna go on for a master's, Josie Hi Josie Hyatt. <laughs> And then finally, graduating from um, OCC with a degree, a uh, associate's degree in nursing, Madison White. So we want to congratulate all of you and wish you all the best and God that God will go with you as you continue in your pursuits. Join me as we have a prayer blessing for these people. Father, we're grateful that we have an opportunity to acknowledge these who are standing before us, who have successfully completed uh, a, uh, 
a, a level of education and a level of training. And I pray you would continue to be with them as they go on in their educational process, as they go on to jobs or whatever happens to lie in their future. We thank you so much for them. And we ask for your encouragement in their lives. We know you're there with them. You're going to be there with them every step along the way. And we thank you for that. Help us as a church to, as we always, as we have a group such as this standing before us, to understand our responsibility to support folks, as, to support our those who are uh, of our younger group that are working, that are growing, that are learning. Help us to remember you've told us to train them and teach them and help us to understand our obligation and responsibility in this regard. Thank you today that we've had this chance to honor them. In your name I pray. Amen. Once again, congratulations graduates to the class of 2022. All right. Congratulations to them. And let's stand. Let's sing as we open our service together. I look like him? Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now you're probably wondering why I have these today. Well, let me tell you why I have these today. Well, yeah, you're going to tell you right now. Today we are kicking off our summer project, our Fishing for Mission summer project, and we are doing it uh, because this is something we do each time of year, as you well know, each summer. And we're doing it for this year for a very special young man uh, who is in our church that we want to support and encourage. Uh, his name is Waylon Dow, and we've got a picture of him right up there. Little Waylon is, I th let's see, three, I think, now. And Little Waylon, some time back, was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer. Now, that has meant two things. He's had to have some surgery, and it also meant that he has to go for treatments. And right now, uh, he, well, matter of fact, right now, he's in the hospital in St. Louis because he got kind of sick, and they had to take him over there so they could get him kind of built back up a little bit. But he has to go each week for treatments to try to help get rid of that cancer. And he's going to be doing this, actually, 
all this summer until August. So we want to show him that we care for him and show him and his family that we love them and show him and his family that we're going to be praying for them and show him and his family that we want to help them any way we could. And so we thought one of the best ways we could help them is through making our effort, our fishing for missions effort this summer, help use that to go towards Waylon and his family because they're, there's just a lot of expense with traveling and other things that come up and that's what we want to try to do. Now, this Waylon's Warriors project was started by their family as a means of letting folks know what's going on with them. And we kind of dovetailed into that and used the, uh, that theme and used that idea and came up with this and this emblem here, this sign that is going to show you, hang on just a minute, this sign is going to show you how we're doing each week. Because see, each week what we're going to be doing, as we always do, is you all are going to be bringing in funds that you've collected through the week. And then we're going to be having you collect funds from folks here in the church who've put back some funds for that week. And we're going to be bringing them up and putting them in a receptacle that's going to be right here. Now, that's what we're going to be doing starting next week and all, all the way throughout the rest of summer. At some, what's that? Well, because he, he's really determined, and he's really intense, and he really wants to show you that he is going to do the best job that he can at what he's doing, and that's why he's got his eyes closed. But anyway, that's what we're going to be doing, and by the way, I should have, um, I, our verse is this. Can you see that right there? Yeah, I can read it for you. And what we ought to do, I should, we're going to print that out, but it's Joshua 1, 9. And that's the verse that, what I want you to do is memorize this verse. You think you could do that? It says, be strong and create, and be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we're going to work on memorizing that verse. And Joshua 1.9, of course, most of you had Bibles, just remember Joshua 1.9, and we're going to be learning that verse. That's going to be our theme verse throughout the whole summer as we join in this project, Wayland's Warriors for Wayland. And that's what we're going to do. Now, Anthony, you got anything you want to add to that that I have left out? You want you go ahead and talk about that. You, you're <laughs> wait. Anthea is going to talk about something else that we're going to be doing uh, as part of our project. So, part of the project for all your hard work, we're going to have T-shirts made for you kids, and most of the adults here in the church are going to get one too. They order them, and this is what's going to be on the front of the T-shirt. So you guys will get to wear those too. So that'll be your shield. You'll you'll be out and show people that you're working for Wayland's Warriors. You're, you're a warrior for Wayland. And I hope you guys bring a lot of change in because they need it really bad to go through all that. It costs a lot of money. So you work really hard, okay? And we're going to give we give them to What's that? Yeah, go ahead and, yep, we're going to give you your buckets now. Bring these back each week because that's what we're going to be using. What you're doing, so you put your change in there. You can ask mom to put it in the utility room, whatever, that she gets the change out of pocket. You guys can collect your allowance, maybe, and put it in there. That'd be really big, wouldn't it? That's money that you might get at home for all the work that you do. <laughs> you do work, you get allowance. Uh, I, I do homework. You do homework. Uh -huh. well, that's good. Everybody has to get their homework done, don't they? <laughs> do what you can. See how much money you can put in there each week, and we'll see what we can do. And at the end of the summer, we're going to do something really fun. Okay. <laughs> now, while Anthea is passing out the buckets, just to let you all know, uh, hopefully we are going to be placing the order for the T-shirts this week, 
and we'll be letting you know when those are available and we'll be of course having them here at church uh, just to kind of give you a heads up they're going to be twelve dollars a piece and if you have not ordered one um, you know, I, I guess I should say that we, it, there still is time, but we need your order today because we will be placing that order this week. We need your name and the size T-shirt you need. Um, give that to Anthea or someone on the missions board or may not want to give it to me. I, I got enough. Well, yeah, may want to give it to Anthea. That'd be a better thing. Uh, the uh, and then now you don't need the money now. Just need your name. We'll collect the money when the t-shirts are in. And um, there will be a Sunday, which we have not set up yet, because obviously it's going to be dependent upon when the t-shirts come in that we're going to set as a, a Wayland Dow Sunday, and we're all going to wear the t-shirts to church. And at some point in time, and maybe next week, uh, I know Beth is going to be here to talk a little bit about what's going on with Wayland. And, uh, they thought about trying to be here today, but as I said, uh, keep them in your prayers because they had to take him to the emergency room uh, two nights ago. He's still in St. Louis Hospital trying to get his numbers up so he can get feeling a little bit better and continue with his treatment. So that would be a prayer item to think about. All right. Now, what are you going to do with those buckets? And what are you going to do with them each week? Bring them back. That's exactly right. And you're going to have this kind of determination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a determined young man, and you're going to be determined young men and women, and you're going to, we're going to have a great time as we celebrate and do what we can to help the, help the Dow family. Okay? Very good. Well, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, for your care for us. Thank you for today. Encourage us as we continue to follow you and as we continue to help serve you and as we continue to help others. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, guys and gals. Oh, yeah. Don't forget your children's bulletins.
because we've experienced it. We know that beyond the shadow of doubt because he says he loves us. We know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, he proved he loves us. He backed up his statements with his actions. You know, that's a good thing to do, isn't it? Our actions should back up our statements. You all agree with that? I, I think it should. My mother always said, your actions talk so loudly, I cannot hear what you're saying. Uh, I can hear those words even now. I know them And you know, that's the way it should be in our lives. But God does that. He backed up His words. He said, I love you with an everlasting, everlasting love. And what did He do? <laughs> he sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross that we might have eternal life. And we praise Him. We praise Him because He indeed is an everlasting God.
They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Now, God did not write that verse for us here in New York, even though we are the eagles. But it does apply. And you know why it applies? Because those of us who follow the Lord know the promise of that verse. God is with us. God cares for us. And He's going to be with us each step along the way. So, that's why we should praise Him. And that's why we know He indeed is mighty to say it. church family. I have a thank you card that I'd like to read here from Fern. It's good to have Fern back with us after being uh, uh, not being able to be here for a while. And she uh, writes, I want to say thank you to my church family and friends for meals prepared by ABW. They were delicious and appreciated. I received phone calls, cards, visits, gifts, and even a beautiful song and countless prayers. It is uh, very good to be back, and I thank God for all of you. Sincerely, Fern Reed. Uh, feeling so much better. <laughs> well, that's good, Fern, and uh, praise the Lord that you're feeling better. Continue with our prayers for her. Let's remember others that we need to be thinking about. I know Gail Ann's going to be going in for a surgical procedure this week. Uh, Janine Horst consulted with her surgeon last week, awaiting results of an MRI tomorrow regarding her surgery date. 
Uh, let's remember Debbie. Debbie's having struggle with some bone spurs, spurs another issue that's making it pretty painful to walk. Uh, as I said, let's remember little Waylon as he continues uh, his struggle and lift him up in our prayers. And we certainly want to uh, lift up others that are in need of our prayers because of illness. We do indeed want to remember uh, the Zumbalan family that lost uh, a 24-year-old uh, Jarrett. Let's remember that family in our prayers. And let's, of course, remember the family of Eileen Stroll. Uh, Eileen, of course, passed away the other day. Her uh, visitation is tomorrow night, 5 to 8, here at the church. And the funeral is 1030 Tuesday. So let's be in prayer for that. Uh, I know, oh, let's continue to remember uh, Barbara Ridgeway. She recuperates from surgery. And I'm sure there's others that I'm forgetting. Uh, raise your hand, jump up and down, whatever. Get my attention. Who else do we, for whom else do we need to be praying? Oh, Tim Dryden. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's remember Tim. I think I sent out an email about him. Uh, and has a brain tumor. Had a brain tumor. They removed it, but they're, they're giving him one to three years. So let's be in prayer for uh, him at this time and his family. Others? Well, join me as we come before the Lord who cares for us and watches over us. And we're going to learn more about that in a little bit in our morning message. But right now we get the, get the choice, the choice privilege of being able to come before him and pray to him just now. Let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you for your blessings and your care. We know this morning you're watching over us. And we know that right now, we can sense your presence because obviously you're here. We know the Holy Spirit is with us. We know the Spirit is here because those of us who are followers of you are indwelt by the Spirit of God. We know your presence is here because you've said where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. And obviously we've gathered in your name to praise you and glorify you and to thank you for the good things you've given to us. This morning, we thank you for our church. I pray you continue to be working within our church and help us to grow, help us to become more of what you would have us to be, help us to realize that you've got things for us to do, you've got places for us to go and telling others, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have of sharing uh, in you, with you, uh, at this time. I do want to thank you for the way you will care for the families that we've mentioned, those people who are struggling because of health needs. And we do think of those families who are struggling because of the loss they've experienced. We think of uh, Rick and his family. We lift them up before you just now. And thank you that Eileen's hope was in you. And we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with you. We thank you for that assurance. This morning we're asking for your continued encouragement as we uh, look to you for help in studying your word. Thank you for what you're going to say to us. Help us to have open hearts and open minds that we would understand what you have. Lead us, I pray, in the way you would have us to go. And we collectively unite our voices to acknowledge you are our God. And we're seeking your wisdom just now by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One other prayer need I neglected to mention. Let's be in prayer for Kevin Cat, Becky's husband. Uh, his uh, lost an uncle, and I we had been praying for him, and his name just went out of my head. But let's be in prayer for the Cat family as they've experienced this loss today, and lift them up in our prayers. I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Psalms 121. 
And if you don't mind, Cleve, can you cut me out of the monitor? My voice is in the monitor, and I don't like my voice. <laughs> Thank you. The book of Psalms, chapter 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Oh, let's stand. Sorry. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Father, encourage our hearts and our minds as we seek to serve you. We're asking for your help and your guidance as we realize that you have something for us to understand. And I thank you for that this morning. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I chose today to speak from what I call the graduation psalm, the commencement psalm. Now, I say that because, not because this psalm was written explicitly for graduates, <laughs> but I say this because the first time I remember preaching this psalm, I'm pretty clear, or pretty, I think that I did, had preached it before, but the first time I recall preaching this psalm was in May of 1980. I, I have spoken at high school graduations, both in Ohio and here, and, and, uh, I was called, I was back home from Texas one time, a uh, pastor of where my mom was attending church, knew I was going to be there and said, hey, why don't you come preach for us this Sunday? It's, it's graduation Sunday, just like we've had today. And I'm sure I've used this passage on graduation Sundays here before. But anyway, that was the first time I remember using it, and for some reason, to me, it's, that's why I've, I've kind of entitled this psalm graduation Psalm. Now, why do I call it graduation psalm? Why do I call it commencement psalm? Or why do I associate it with graduation? The psalm was written as a psalm of ascents. You probably see that in your Bibles, this little postscript or prescript uh, in little letters. And what that meant was it's part of a group of psalms that included uh, Psalm 120 through 134 that were meant to be sung as the people would be traveling to Jerusalem on their way to celebrate the Passover or the Day of Atonement or their festivals. They would do this. There were six annual festivals that, and other other minor festivals, but they and as many as people, as many as they could, it still happens today. People gather in Jerusalem to celebrate there. Now, of course, if, when this psalm was written, um, probably written before Solomon, so the tabernacle was there, and that's where they were going to be going to congregate around Jerusalem, the tabernacle, and worship a lot of people, of course. But it was a time of of celebration and so the people would be on their way gathering and going from all over the place and it's called a sense because no matter if you're coming north south east or west you're always going up to Jerusalem in the scripture but anyway they're going up to Jerusalem to celebrate and on their way there they sing any of you ever sing with your family and you're traveling oh, I'm the only oddball here I always did. I mean, not so much with my kids, but, but anyway, but we know well. We did. Anyway, they sang. Now, they sang for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, to pass the time. Uh, they didn't have many vans with DVDs in them for the kids to watch back then, you know. <laughs> and so they would pass the time, and they did it to 
pass the time, but they also did it for a number, another reason. You see, when they were traveling to Jerusalem, these travelers, uh, their emotions were high. First of all, they were excited. They were really excited because, well, they're going to celebrate, and it's a festive time. So yeah, they're, they're just you know, happy about what's taking place. They're looking forward to this, so they're excited. But yet, on the other hand, there's a little bit of anxiety involved. They're a little anxious. Why? This psalm is, uh, kind of expresses that as much as any other psalm written. When it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Now, I put hills in there. I know you, you thought I misquoted it, didn't you? And when I, because I was quoting a while ago, no, I didn't misquote it. I'm sorry. I, I know mountains is a translation, probably a better translation, but I cut my teeth on the King James, and there's certain things in the King James I don't want to change. And Psalm 121, that one word is one of them. Hills. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills. Of course, it's, I lift up my eyes to the hills. And the reason they lift up their eyes to the hills, that's... Where does my help come from? See, that's not... Many, many have thought, well, that's a statement of, you know, you're looking to the hills and they know that their help's going to come from the hills. No, that's not it. They look at the hills and they're a little bit concerned. They've got to travel through those hills. And in those hills, there's thieves. In those hills, there's wild animals. In those hills, there's treacherous paths. And they're kind of concerned as they go through these hills, not knowing what's there, not knowing what they might encounter. So there's some uncertainty. There's some fears. There's some concerns. So therefore, they are wanting to be assured. And that's, what, that's why they sing this song. So the first thing we see here in this passage as we think about graduation thoughts is, comes from that first verse that there is concern because of the future. There is concern because they don't know what's ahead. Well, see, that's much like those who are graduating <laughs> in one sense, uh, particularly uh, those who are, might be older. Uh, you, I, I remember my, now I, there's a lot of excitement Obviously, that's the predominant thing. You're excited. You're graduating. You're getting, you finish one stage. You're going on to another stage. A lot of excitement. But yet, you know, there is maybe a little bit of concern. I, when I graduated from junior high, I was going to high school. Of course, my biggest concern was, oh, my word, how am I going to find my classes in that big building over there? You know, so that was my main concern. <laughs> It's not a big one, of course, but it is a concern. And in graduating from high school, tremendous excitement. Man, I'm graduating. But yet, you know, hey, I'm going to college. What's it going to be like? You know, am I going to cut it? You know, there's a little concern there as well. And then when I graduated from uh, uh, college, you know, I thought, oh, my. Man, I'm excited. I'm graduating from college. But, huh. I need to get a job now. Uh, I gotta support me, and well, as a matter of fact, not only support me, but I was already married at the time, and I know my dear wife was working. Sherry was already working, and she's saying at that point in time, "Okay, kid, now you gotta work too. <laughs> Enough of this freeloading." Uh, so there was some concern there. Um, probably, I guess my biggest concern was not. And it's not necessarily, well, let me not get ahead of myself, but yet, uh, let me, because let me talk about my final, well, it wasn't my final graduation, but the one that was the, the biggie. Um, when I finished seminary, I was so excited. Finished the seminary, and now, uh, where am I going to go? Wasn't quite sure. Talked to some churches, and so there's a little bit of concern there. What am I going to do? And here I came you know, uh, 39 years ago. And I think of those, those times, and there was a great deal of excitement, but obviously a little, cons what does the future hold for us? And I suppose maybe m the biggest time of concern that I can, if I was to pinpoint a time in my life, and 
once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let, let me say this before I get on with that story. Um, this, of course, fits well with graduation in that sense because the emotions that graduates may be feeling right now are similar to what these you find here in these travelers. Excitement, but yet, you know, concern. What is the, what's, it the, what's up ahead for me? You know, what am I going to get into? What am I going to find? So you ask the question. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Well, that's a good question. It was a question that I sort of asked when uh, Sherry and I decided after my first year of teaching, well, we had decided before that, but after I, I was teaching school, uh, we decided that we were going to, I, we were going to go back to school, I was going to go back to school to go into ministry full time. Um, I had thought about that, we had talked about it, and I had thought about that, and I was teaching, I was preaching, doing both, and I thought, this is great, and I know a lot of people do, a lot of people did both, by vocational pastors, but I thought, I got to do one or the other. <laughs> I'm either going to teach and really cut back on my ministry, uh, or I am going to full-time in ministry, and of course, that's what we decided. Well, let's see what that meant was. Um, we both left our jobs. She was working as a caseworker for the state of Ohio, and I was teaching school, and we both uh, left jobs that we had, and then we, uh, of course, put everything we owned in a U-Haul trailer and our little 1977, are you ready for this, Chevette. <laughs> Many of you my age and older, you remember Chevettes. Maybe some of you had a Chevette. I owned the car for three months and it started using oil. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we loaded everything we had in those two vehicles and off we went to Dallas, Texas. Excited as can be. Going to seminary, going to Dallas. But yet, uh, on the other hand, you know, what is really up ahead? What are we going to get into? But of course, in spite of concerns and fears for the unknown, we knew we still needed to go ahead, as did these travelers, as do the graduates, as do all of us. I bring up this last point because you know what? Life is full of graduation moments, isn't it? You see, not just graduates experience these times where, on the one hand, there's excitement for what's ahead. You're excited about what's going on. There's joy. But yet, on the other hand, hmm, what's up there? What am I going to get into? What's going to happen? There's things that bring anxiety and fear and concern and uncertainty in our lives. Um, I, you know, we, someone mentioned that even in our service earlier today. And we, we know we are life, and the life is like that. And what I've found after having lived in this life almost 66 years is, you know, it, it really doesn't change much. And I, I want to say that on the one hand, uh, to be encouraging, not discouraging. Because the thing is, even though life is like that in general, we will, we will thrive, you know? You will go forward. Graduates, you will go forward because, yes, your future's bright. There's things to do. You know, those of us who've gone through those, you know, we, the, yes, you go forward. Why? Because you know, well, that's what we need to do. And secondly, we know that even though as we face our lives and face circumstances in our lives that bring uncertainty, uh, at any, and this happens at any stage in life, of course, whether you're young and just graduating or whether you're, you know, <laughs> a little older and getting married and kids come along and then, of course, kids, you, that brings another thing is you, you're kind of concerned for your kids and I don't know how it is with you all, but folks, that's never gone away for me. 
I mean, I've got a 36-year-old daughter that for the last month and a half, I mean, I've been going up and down and up and down with this thing with Megan and, and her, her deciding to leave her job and move to Moorhead. And I've been right there, probably maybe too much, uh, vicariously, right there, right along with her because, I don't know, so that's the Edith Willis in me. Anyway, uh, you know, you just so obviously the, there's our lives are like that. There's things that bring us and that this situation with Megan is a time for her of great excitement. But yet, man, you know what's up? There's so many we got to buy, sell house, buy house, da, 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 da. and life will is always like that. You get a little older along the way, and end of life circumstances kind of come into play. You know, you, you think, well, do I do I have enough money to retire? <laughs> Can't remember, is, you know, how's that looking? And how's my health going to hold out? You know, uh, things that can bring uncertainty. And if you allow those things, the thing is, that if you allow those things that bring uncertainty and fear and anxiety, to predominate your thinking, boy, it just paralyzes you, you know? See, if those travelers to Jerusalem would allow that fear that was expressed in that one simple statement, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, a source of anxiety and concern. If they were to focus on that, where's my help going to come from? If they were to stop right there, then you know what they would do? They would stop. They wouldn't go any further. They wouldn't make it to Jerusalem for the festival. They would say, oh, I can't do this. And unfortunately, that happens to f folks at times, doesn't it? That happens. But we who follow the Lord know that we can keep going and go f onward. Because in spite of what might lie ahead, about which we do not know, God does. And God is there to encourage us. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And then the next few verses, all the way through verse 7, it are these verses that one after the other that brings us confidence in the Father. There is confidence because of the Father. I will lift up my eyes to the, the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over you does not slumber or sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. One thing right after the other, one statement of encouragement, one statement of confidence right after the other, reminding us that people, we are not walking alone. You'll never walk alone. You remember that old, that song? When you walk through the storm. Oh, hey, that's, a, that's a song that sometimes is sung at commencement. You'll never walk alone. I mean, used to be back in my day. <laughs> You'll never walk alone. Why? Because God is always with you. And the writer of this psalm, to encourage those people going up to Jerusalem, facing times of uncertainty, times of anxiety, are reminded that God is there with them every step along the way. And they're reminded to hold their head up and look towards God because God's going to be there to protect them, to guide them, to encourage them, and to go with them step after step after step. Now we can sing that today, and we do sing that today. You are the everlasting God we sang today. 
And that last verse says that the Lord will uh, watch. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will watch over your life. The Lord will watch your coming and going, both now and forevermore. That's what God will do. That's what the promise is that we have from God. So our graduates today are facing times of excitement. And also, you know, well, what's ahead? What's next? But you know, if I were to ask you a question today, I would imagine every one of you today would answer in the affirmative. Is there something right now in your life that's causing you some concern? That's a rhetorical question. If there ever was one, isn't there? Because can you remember a time in your life when you could honestly say there was something about, there was nothing about which you were concerned? That you were just absolutely, totally carefree? We may never achieve in this life a position where we can say honestly that we're totally and, and, uh, and unequivocally and exhaustively carefree. But we can say in our lives, in spite of what I don't know, I, what I do know is so much greater that I do know I have a God who's there. That I do know I have a God watching out for me. That I do know the Savior cares for me and loves me. And right now he's with me. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Oh, those hills, are, there's dangers there. Yeah, but the person who created those hills is with you. He's there to help you. He's there to watch over you. So you can commence to follow him because of your faith. There is commencement because of our faith. And I say commencement in the sense of, hey, graduation and commencement, when you use those terms, they signify times in your life where you've reached an accomplishment, but it means you're also going forward. And right now, I encourage all of you, if there's something you're struggling with in your life, hey, let's work on graduating from that. And let's commence to walk on faith in faith, realizing God, the maker of heaven and earth, is our leader. The one who is watching over you. The one who is your shade at your right hand. He is there for you. The one who says that he's going to keep you from all harm. The one who says that he will watch over you, he will watch your life. There are three sources, three elements here that I want to highlight in conclusion about this psalm that really authenticate this message of confidence and encouragement for us. One is the straightforward statements that are made, the language that's used. When it talks about the maker of heaven and earth and, and how he's our shade at our right hand and he's caring for us and he's watching over us. All those statements are working together to bring us encouragement. You read, as I said in my initial reading, look, one right after the other, statement of confidence, statement of assurance, statement of, of, uh, of help, promising that God is there. So the language is one, one element of this psalm that lends to this idea that it's a psalm that should provide confidence for us in times of uncertainty. The second thing that I see in this psalm is the subtle movement in the tenses. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? The question. And the answer is an answer that is... Um, brings in the past. Where does my help come from? 
My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And it refers to a situation, a circumstance, that which happened in the past. Of course, that was a biggie, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let me remind you of this past event that was brought about by this God that is bringing you help. And I've been saying that and saying that. We've been studying about that on Wednesday nights as we were studying Genesis to be reminded of God being the source of everything there is. People, think of that. And being the same. Kent, a few weeks ago, talked about that, how big things are in the universe. And God is the one who made all that. He is the one that's going to give you help to go over that hill. You got a hill in your life right now? Remember who's on your side. The maker of heaven and earth. And you see from the past what he's able to do. But there's also the sense of the present. It moves from the past to the present in the very next verse. He will not. It goes from the kind of a past. He will not. Present tense. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you. In other words, the one who's watching over you right now. This isn't just something he's done in the past. He's doing it now. And for the next several verses, the present is what is emphasized. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. Present tense. Not the Lord watched over you, or the Lord will watch over you. That's yet to come. But reminding you right now. And then it does get into the present, or the, the, uh, the future tense, the last verse. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Verse 7. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will watch over your life. Future tense there. The Lord, now this is really good. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And I say that's really good to kind of segue into my third statement, my third element that I want to point out. The, remember the language? Remember the use of tenses that past, present, and future, he's always there for us. And now let me, let me point out one other literary element that's here that is used to make this psalm ring with this idea of confidence. It's, it's the element of merit. It uses merism. Now, you know what a merism is? It's a literary element where you use parts of a whole to symbolize the whole. For example, if you were to say, that man knows A to Z about a car engine, that's a merism. A to Z. You're talking, in other words, he knows an engine really well. Or if you were to say, someone knows something backwards and forwards. Or if you were to say something like, we experience the ups and downs of water skiing or whatever. <laughs> Pardon my pun. <laughs> Up and down. I didn't even intend to do that, but I did. If it, you, obviously, none of you have ever been water skiing. <laughs> uh, I know you have. But anyway, I was, see, I don't water ski. I, I tried a couple times, and my problem was I was down more than I was up. So I said, this isn't for me. <laughs> but up and down, that statement, that's a merism. Well, we see this, there are four merisms in this psalm. Now, I'm not going to take the time to point out all of them, but I'm going to point out the very last one. He will watch over your coming and going. Now and forevermore. Not only is he going to watch over your coming and going, that's a merism, coming and going, but he defines that even further by saying now and forevermore. 
See, people, how long is God going to take care of you? Forever. Forever. Now, I say that because I want you to realize and recognize and respond to the idea of God's care for you, the extent of God's care for you, the breadth and the height and the depth of God's care for you. He's committed to you eternally. You know, you, you, sometimes we sign contracts and we say, I'm going to sign this contract, but you know, this contract is, um, you know, it's got a year, so I'm going, to, I'm going to enter into this contract because it only has a year. And at the end of that year, I don't like it. Then, okay, I'll, I'll just go on to something else. God doesn't do that with us people. When we entered into a relationship with Him, through faith in Him, you know how long that contract lasts? Forever. He will watch over your coming and going now and forevermore. Was it Randy Travis that says, I'm going to love you forever? That has a good song, but good for you, Randy. I'm glad you know you sang that. Made you a bunch of bucks. But you know, really, you couldn't say that. You know, but God can. When I think about that song, and I, I, I don't forgive me. I don't. I don't think I'm being. Well, it's just the way it is. I think about that song, and I can picture God singing it to me. I'm going to love you forever, forever and ever. Amen. Because that is how long God's going to love me. Romans chapter eight assures us that there's nothing that's going to diminish or to separate us from God's love. Neither height nor depth, the principalities or power, the things present or things to come. Merism, by the way. Things present, things to come. You know, see if you don't learn anything else from today, you can, you've learned what a merism is if you didn't know. <laughs> but, that, but, but that's a structure here that to me emphasizes the point that is made in this psalm. And it's not just to you guys and gals who are graduating. <laughs> it's for all of us. It's for every one of us. This hope, this assurance, this help, this promise of being there. And it's not going to ever stop. Never, 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 never. Never stop. Why aren't you jumping up and down and shouting hallelujah? You know? Woo! I will if you won't. Man! I talked a little while ago about getting excited. I am excited about that. And see, thinking about that helps me to face those times of uncertainty. Knowing that, yeah, I'm going to experience them. I'm not going to be taken out of them. But God, the maker of heaven and earth, is going to be there with me now, and not only now, but forevermore. So bring it on. <laughs> God's on my side. And those of you who are, as I said, graduating, keep that in mind. As you go on to whatever you're going to do. Because, yeah, God, hey, people, God helps you. College people, well, you already know this. High school people going on to college. God can help you choose the right class. Now, you guys might argue with me. The people I've had to choose, and I, I had to choose classes long before there was computers. I had, oh, God. I don't even want to be, and those of you who are my age and older, I don't even want to begin to tell you what registration usually was like for a new semester. Ugh. But God, God, I would pray, oh Lord, you know I've got to get in this class. Now, of course, sometimes I had to go a different class because it wasn't there. But you know, it's a funny thing. Not one, even those detours, 
I could see, learn things. Say, God, thank you. You are there for me, aren't you? You're there. You're watching over me. You've promised to be there. And I know you're there. And you'll never not be there. And that's just the way it is. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this psalm that reminds us of your presence. This psalm that reminds us that at times when we face excitement and exhilaration because of what's happening, but yet still a little bit of anxiety and concern because of what's happening, you're there for us. You're there for us at times when we're facing nothing but all but anxiety, the just full-blown fear. You're there for us. And I thank you for that. And so help us to lift up our eyes, not at the hills and fear and doubt, but lift up our eyes to you, knowing that you're there with us each step along the way. We pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing our final hymn together. Uh, I'll let be reminded that God is there for us, and sometimes we just need to ask Him to open our eyes that we can see. We're going to sing all three verses, and then there's a refrain to this, but we will not sing the refrain until after we sing the three verses. Open my eyes that I may see.